Here's a common scenario that's happening amongst a lot of AI devs these days. You've deployed and built an AI agent into production, and then something goes wrong. Whether your user is receiving a weird hallucinated response, maybe performance is slow and latency is high, um, or you just don't know what's going on under the hood of your AI agents and workflows. We want to know why are all these things happening. We want visibility into these and insights as to why our workflows are not working the way that they should. This is the basis of AI observability, and it's become a very hot topic amongst AI devs these days. Today, I'm going to be going over that problem and showing you how we can solve it using Langflow, a platform to build your AI workflows and AI agents, and Arise, which is an observability platform. First, let's get started on how you actually use Arise and integrate that into your uh, local Langflow instance. So. If we pop into our Arise and Langflow docs here, we see that we have two ways to connect to Arise. One is the Arise platform and one is Arise Phoenix. Now at a high level, to my understanding, Arise platform is more of an enterprise uh, uh, offering for users. So you'll have a bit more uh, enterprise-based features. Um, it's hosted versus Arise Phoenix, which is open source, uh, locally hosted, for uh, kind of smaller developers and use cases. So today, nonetheless, I'll be showing you how to set up both. It's a very similar setup process either way. So as you see here from the Arise platform first, we do need our Arise space ID and our Arise API key. So let's obtain those things first. But once you have an account, you are dropped into this homepage here. And once from my homepage, I go to my settings, account settings, and first thing I see is actually my space ID, which is what was needed from the docs here. And then I need an API key. So how do I do that? I create a new API key. I'm going to call this Langflow Arise Test. Let's see, do you guys like lower cases or do you guys like camel cases? Comment below. Um, and then we're going to create that API key. Great. Um, I'm going to copy those here on the side and also grab my Arise Phoenix key. And I'm going to be doing these simultaneously because the setup is very much the same um, and we'll be able to see the same flows reflect into both platforms. So it'll be kind of cool. So same sign up process with Arise uh, Phoenix, except the interface is slightly different. Again, as I mentioned, the setup is very similar. Um, with Phoenix, you only need the API key. Um, you don't need a space ID, according to the docs here. So um, you do have to declare it as Phoenix API key. So now that we have our credentials, how do we actually run this in Langflow? Well, if you're like me, you're running Langflow um, a UV pip install. So how do I actually use my, uh, how do I actually integrate Arise is I create a .env file at the root directory of my Linkflow instance. So all I'm doing is here I am in my root directory and I'm just going to do vi.env. I'm going to insert and put those credentials here. And I'm going to call this Arise platform credentials. And let's replace these values here really quickly. So we have our space ID, there it is. And then we need our API key, there we go. And now I'm going to put in my Arise Phoenix credentials. And that's it. So now I can save it by doing colon, uh, by escaping first and then doing colon WQ. And now our .env file is saved. Now I want to run my Langflow application using that .env file and making sure that it's acknowledging the .env file. So how do I do that? I use this command here and I'm just going to copy, literally copy and paste that into my terminal. So that's uv run Langflow run uh, dash dash env dash file dot env and we're going to let that run. Okay. And once our Langflow instance has started, we can navigate to this local instance here and we're going to create a new flow. So, um, I already had one created where I was testing, but for this video, let's create a new one and I'm just going to call it arise test two. Perfect. So right here we have a simple agent. Um, it has, uh, an open AI model as the back. 
the the back end the back end model and then it has two tools one is the url tool and one is the calculator tool i'm just going to ask it some questions here in the playground just to uh generate some back and forth with the with the agent so let's have it use some tools so two plus two this should use the calculator tool and we should see that yep so now it's using the fetch content tool because the model doesn't have the current exchange rates. Um, and then now I'm going to ask it one more question, convert 200 USD to let's just say euro because I see it here. So now let's go into Arise and uh, the Arise platform first, and then we'll go into Phoenix and see how we can observe our lane flow flows. So let's go into Arise platform. And I see I have Arise Test 2 appear here almost automatically. Uh, so now it's loading up all of the data and generating some information for us. So while it's doing that, I'm gonna hop into Phoenix and also see where I can view my project. So um, similar to Arise Platform, you have a projects uh, nav here. I can open all the projects that I have. We see Arise Test 2, and actually this loaded a bit faster. So um, here on Phoenix, I see the different processes that I just had. Here's the inputs, right? I said, hi, is the sky blue, 2 plus 2? And then if I want to step through one of those processes, so say I wanted to do this one, I can click on it, and we see the trace and the span of that conversation that I just had with the user. So we see that I input 2 plus 2, and the agent ultimately responded back to me two plus two equals four. Um, and then we have some metadata. I can go into each component that was called in the flow. So chat input, we had the URL component. The URL component took this amount of time. So we see that here. And then the agent ultimately took four seconds. So we can see we have that visibility into each of the processes um, of our AI workflows and our AI agents. Now, by now, I think that the Arise test in the platform uh, did load, which is great. So now let's see what features I have here in Arise platform. So very similar. I'm going to go into my 2 plus 2 flow. I see that same span. Um, I actually have a visualization here on the bottom that's more of a graph. So it helps me visualize the flow here as well. Um, but here we have a little bit more features, right? We have evals. Um, you can also monitor so you can create different triggers that you want to monitor um, you can create certain dashboards custom metrics evals and tasks so there are more tools in the arise platform version than there are in the phoenix version though as you saw setup was exactly the same and in just a matter of minutes and just a couple api keys in a env file i was able to hook up my linkflow instance to my arise instances and have and view all of the different workflows that I have in Langflow. So every time that a flow is triggered and executed, you see that reflect here in my Arise platform. So that was a very quick video on how to get started with Arise and Langflow. I hope that you can get started and get a kickstart um, on building your own workflows with Langflow, as well as doing AI observability as well. Uh, the platform that you choose is ultimately your choice. Platforms like Arise are open source and free to use. Um, so I definitely uh, recommend you checking them out and finding which one works best for you. As always, continue the conversation with us, join us on Discord, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.